In this video, I'll introduce some of my favorite extension packages for the ggplot2 package in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's jump right into the R code. Before we can jump into the ggplot2 extensions, we first need to install and load the ggplot2 package. As you can see in lines two and three of the code, I have installed the package already. So for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line three. So after running this line of code, the functions of the ggplot2 package are imported. In the next step, we also need to import some example data that we can use for the examples in this tutorial. And in this tutorial, we will use the iris data set that we can load with the data function, as you can see in line five of the code. And then in the next step, I apply the head function to the iris data set to show the first six rows of the iris data set at the bottom in the RStudio console. So after running this line of code, you can see that the iris data set contains five columns. And in these columns, we have different information about iris flowers, such as the sipple length, sipple width, petal length, petal width, and the iris flower species. Number five, ggdist. In order to use the ggdisk package, we first need to install and load it, as you can see in lines 8 and 9 of the code. I have installed this package as well, so for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line 9. So after running this line of code, the package functions are imported. And in this example, I want to show you how to draw a rain cloud plot using the ggdisk package. And to do that, we have to use the ggplot function. Within this function, we have to specify the data set, in this case, the iris data set. Then within the aesthetics of the ggplot function, we specify sepal length to be on the x-axis, the categorical species column to be on the y-axis, and the fill should be equal to species as well. And then we apply certain ggdist functions and the first function that we are going to use is the geom dots interval function and this function creates a dots interval of a distribution then in the next step we use the stat slab function which creates a density and then we also use the geom box plot function of the ggplot2 package to add a box plot to our graph so after running these lines of code, you can see at the bottom right that a new graph is appearing. We can enlarge this graph by clicking on the zoom button. And now you can see that we have used the ggdist package to create a rain cloud plot. So here at the top, you can see a density, then you can see a box plot, and then a point interval at the bottom of this group. And then you can see that we have done this three times for the three different species groups Virginica, Versicolor, and Setosa. If you'd like to learn more about the ggdisk package and the other packages that I will introduce in this video, then make sure to check out my comprehensive online course on the topic Data Visualization in R Programming using ggplot2 and threads. And in this online course, I will introduce the ggplot2 package and many other extension packages. So now let's move on with the video. Number four, ggrough. So the ggrough package is used to make ggplot2 plots interactive. And in order to use the package, we first need to install and load it. As you can see in lines 22 and 23 of the code, I have installed this package already. For that reason, I'm just going to load it with line 23. And then in the next step, we first need to set up our ggplot2 plot using the ggplot function, as you can see in lines 25 to 28. So here in this case, I specify that the data should be equal to iris. On the x-axis, I want to show sepal length. On the y-axis, I want to show a sepal width. And our graph should be colored based on the species column. And then I use the geomline interactive function of the ggraph package. So note, we are not using geomline, which would be the typical function provided by ggplot2. But in this case, we use geomline interactive provided by ggrough. Then within this function, we specify another aesthetics call. And in this case, we specify a tooltip and a data ID. And we also modify the line width. So after running these lines of code, 
a new graph object called mygiraffe is created. And now we can visualize this graph using the giraffe function, as you can see in line 33 of the code. So after running this line of code, a new plot is appearing at the bottom right. We can enlarge this plot by clicking on the zoom button. And now you can see that we have created a line plot, which is interactive because the line over which we hover gets orange. And you can also see that depending on the line, the group of this line is returned. So for instance, here, this line corresponds to the Versicolor group. Number three, patchwork. The patchwork package is used to draw plot compositions. And in order to use patchwork, we first have to install and load the package, as you can see in lines 35 and 36. So I will just import the package because I have installed it already. And then in the next step, we have to create several plot objects that we can draw in our grid of plots or our plot composition. And we can do that, as you can see in lines 38 to 54 of the code. So in lines 38 to 42, I create a first plot object called my patchwork one. Then I create another plot object called my patchwork two and a third plot object called my patchwork three. So after running these lines of code, all these plot objects are appearing at the top right. And now in line 56 of the code, we are actually applying the patchwork syntax and patchwork allows us to combine multiple plots using the plus operator and the slash operator. So here in this case, you can see that we want to create a grid of plots containing our three plots, my patchwork one, my patchwork two, and my patchwork three. And the plus operator is used to show plots side by side. And the slash operator is used to show plots on top of each other. So after running line 56 of the code, you can see the result of this syntax. We can enlarge the graph to see it a little bit better. And now you can see that we have created a grid containing three different plots. The scatter plot is shown on the left side in both rows of our grid. And then we have two other plots on the right side in the right column of our grid. And this line plot is shown at the top right, and our box plot is shown at the bottom right. Number two, GG stats plot. The GG stats plot package allows you to add certain statistical metrics to your GG plot two graphics with very simple syntax. And we can install and load the GG stats plot package as you can see in lines 58 and 59. I have installed this package already, so for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line 59 of the code. And then in this example, I want to show you how to use the GG between stats function of the GG stats plot package. The package also provides other functions for other types of plots. However, in this example, we will use the GG between stats function. And within this function, we have to specify our data set, the X axis column and the Y axis column, and that's it. The functions provide more arguments. However, we can already create a nice looking plot using only these three lines of code. So after running these lines of code, you can see at the bottom right that a new graph is appearing. And as you can see, we have created a relatively complex violin plot. So here you can see three violins, one for each group in our data set. And then on top of that, you can also see many statistical metrics. For example, you can see the sample sizes of the three groups. So here in this case, all groups contain a sample size of 50. Then you can see the mean values. So you can already see that the Virginica group has the highest mean value. Here on top, you can see group-wise comparisons and the corresponding p-values. So as you can see, these p-values are very low, which means that the group differences are significant. And then you also have an f-test at the top, which compares if at least one of the groups is different compared to the other groups. Number one, GG Animate. The GG Animate package is my favorite ggplot2 extension because I think it creates very nice animated graphs. And I will show you in this example how to do that based on the iris data set once again. 
So first we have to install and load the package, as you can see in lines 65 and 66. And then in the next step, we first have to specify our plot. So here in this case, we use the ggplot function, we specify the iris data set, and then within the aesthetics, we specify that we want to draw sepal length on the x-axis, sepal width on the y-axis, and we want to color our plot using the species color. Then we specify that we want to draw a geom point, so a scatter plot, and the size of the points should be equal to 5. So up to here, this is ggplot2 syntax. And then we use the transition states function of the ggAnimate package to animate our plot. And within this function, we specify the species column, the transition length, and the state length of the animation. So after running these lines of code, you can see that a rendering process is started. So it always takes a few seconds to render your graphs when you want to animate them. However, after some waiting time, you can see at the bottom right that a new graph is appearing. We can also enlarge this graph to see it a little bit better. And now you can see that we have created an animated graph of our iris data set. More precisely, we are showing the sepal width and sepal length in a scatter plot with our three groups. And now you can see that the animation always shows only one group, and then there's a smooth transition to the next group. Then these points are shown, and now the next group is shown, and this is looping infinitely. I hope you have enjoyed my top five extension packages for the ggplot2 data visualization package in our programming. Please let me know in the comments in case you have other packages in mind that you would put into this top five. And if you would like to learn more about data visualization using ggplot2 and extension packages, such as the ones shown in this video, then also make sure to check out my comprehensive online course on data visualization using ggplot2 and friends in our programming. Link in the description of this video and then see you soon. Bye bye.